One of the most desirable model train sets or models for me when growing up was the Intercity 125 from the United Kingdom. I think it was the first train in the country to regularly do over 200 km per hour or 125 miles per hour in service. It could go a bit faster than that of course, but in regular service they regularly did 125 mph, hence the Intercity 125 name. So whenever I saw these models in glossy catalogues of model train manufacturers such as Hornby and Lima and the rest, I always wanted to get myself a set. So here I am in 2024 with three sets. So I'm going to show you today a modification you can do on your Hornby sets because all three of these are Hornbys. I don't know if the same will apply for a Lima or any other brand, you'll have to find that out. But that modification is giving them directional lighting. Now this one here is in the original blue and yellow livery and it has got the in directional LED lighting upgrade that I've done on it. This one in Swallow livery is an interesting one because I've done a video review on this set and how I got it in near pristine condition from the UK. I'll put a link to that video, you can watch it. This one has the original incandescent bulb that lights up when only going in the forwards direction. It's diode controlled, so when the loco is going, or rather dummy or whatever is going in the opposite direction, nothing shows here. This one is the latest one I got in January of this year. It's in Virgin Trains livery and well, it should have the incandescent bulb. I haven't opened it up yet, but something's wrong inside. I think most likely the bulb is blown out or maybe some connection is loose because nothing lights up. So let me show you all three of these on my track. Just gonna put this one here. Let me get the camera a little closer so that you can see the lighting happening. Okay, I'm gonna select the direction. Full forward, nothing. Full reverse, nothing. Now let me show you this one, which is the swallow livery one with the incandescent bulb in it. Okay. Full forward, well, it's pointing the other way, so yeah. Full reverse, you can see, well, technically, yes, it should be coming towards you like that. This is the dummy, so there's no motor, so it's not doing that. You can see the incandescent bulb working. If I reduce the power on the controller, you can see it gets dimmer. Increase the power, it gets brighter. That's another side effect of incandescent bulbs. They are brightness depends on your controller because I'm using gauge master controllers which you can also read a review about I'll put a link to that as well and they vary the voltage I've verified this with a multimeter so now this is the upgraded one let me show you when it's going forwards you can see it has well kind of warm white LED because I selected this color because it's similar to the color that this particular livery in its period would have had and when you switch over to reverse it has a fairly dim red light. I'm just going to put my hand over there so you can see the red light over there. I think you can. Let's see. Yeah, it's there. It's very dim. I need to do something about that, but it's there. So this has the upgrade. This one needs the upgrade. And this one really needs the upgrade. So it's this one that I'm going to cannibalize. Well, not really cannibalize because my upgrade is zero modification like I like to call it. You don't need to cut any plastic or drill any holes for it. So I'm going to do the upgrade on this one. As for this one, I will do it at a later date because I'm a little apprehensive to open it up. It's, you know, in near untouched condition when I got it. It has remained that way apart from wheel cleanups and that kind of thing, which you don't need to open a loco up to do on these models. So this is the one that will get the directional lighting upgrade. And because it's the virgin livery that came much later on, it will get proper cool white headlamps and of course red tail lamps. Once again directional because that's the beauty of LEDs. LEDs are directional, you don't need a diode, you just need to connect them the correct way and hook up your wiring correctly and well, they'll do what they have to do. All my locos are DC of course, if you're on DCC then you can do your own kind of wiring and stuff. I'm not a DCC expert, so I'm not going to delve into that area. So without further ado, let's see how this upgrade has to be done. So before I get started, I'm just going to take you through some of the things that you're going to need for this upgrade. First of all, you're going to need a soldering iron. And it's really good if you have a soldering iron stand as well, because then when your iron is hot, you can just put it in there and put it to a side without burning your fingers. You need solder, soldering flux. Then a really good thing to get would be a box of LEDs like this because as you can see you've got 
a range of colors we have three millimeter and five millimeter leds there green yellow cool white blue and red it's the cool white and the red three millimeter ones that i'm going to be using for this upgrade so i've got plenty of either color there then we are going to need some uh, wire i just cut up this ribbon cable and use because it has the right thickness and the right flexibility so to speak that i can route it around things inside the locomotive without causing any damage or fouling up the wheels finally you need this this is called strip board as you can see it has strips like that so what will happen is we are going to measure the inside of the locomotive here once i open it up there'll be a place there where the incandescent bulb resides just about that long we will be cutting a piece of strip board to that length and we will solder leds onto it i'm thinking four leds two white two red and the wires to it and we will also have to use a one kilo ohm resistor which i will show you when i'm doing this process because that will control the current going to the leds because leds usually work on around 2.5 to 3.2 volts depending on their color and specification so if you go and whack 12 volts through an led you're going to see it burn out quite spectacular actually you put too much current to it actually it does pop or at the very least gets very hot and just flames out of smokes out not recommended and i'm not going to do that on camera either because here i want to do something constructive not destructive so yes we have our red leds there we have our white leds there we've got our strip board we've got our wires i'll get the resistor later we've got the soldering iron we've got the soldering flux and if you're a bit careless with your soldering or first timer get a desoldering pump as well because what that does is if you make a mistake you simply push in the plunger put it onto the solder joint that you made the mistake on heat it up with the iron and press and it sucks out the solder so to speak so it gives you kind of a second chance but with soldering it's always best to get it right first time don't leave room for second chances to be needed so let's get into now the actual modification so how do you open up this locomotive well you can slide off the bogies there are clips on either ends you can do that but that doesn't give us access to the insides for the inside what we do is I'm going to use my fingers here, gently prise away the body from the chassis. It's a fairly gentle operation you've got to do because there are clips here and here. So when you're easing one clip off, you can see that clip went back in. Now, what's really tempting is to just get a screwdriver and go with it there, but that's going to damage the body of your locomotive. So instead of a screwdriver, I think the best thing to do is to just prise it out like that. I may have used a little more force than required, but that's okay because I haven't damaged anything. Now here we can see this particular locomotive has the incandescent bulb mounted there. Let's just get it out of the way. It's, you have also a bit of what's known as the cab detail, very basic cab detail by Hornby there. You can put some people in. In fact, I think, yes, this one I have put a lady driver in there because why not I have lady drivers and male drivers on my railroad so you can put a person in the seat there you just have to cut their legs off here we can see because I've already removed the contacts on this bogey for some servicing so that's why the wires are cut like this because I'm going to rewire everything up this is the diode not sure if you can see that I'm just going to take it away and this we don't need because with LEDs like I said you don't need a diode this is the weight that was in the chassis. You do need that. It helps keep your locos on the track. This is the incandescent bulb. And that little shelf there is where we are going to cut our strip board and place our new bulbs, LEDs. So we can take out the incandescent bulb and the wiring because we are going to rewire everything. So now we have got a bare chassis that's ready for conversion with my LED lighting upgrade. You can see the inside is mostly empty so that's great that's great because we've got plenty of space to do things if you like you could also add a cab light but that will need some cutting to put an led there and i'm not inclined to do that that's why i'm not adding a cab light also if you do add a cab light you'd need to do some sort of like a full bridge rectifier or use an incandescent bulb because like i said leds are directional so you'd ideally want a cab light to light in both directions but since LEDs are directional, it wouldn't light when going backwards. So yeah, you need some electronics for that. We're not going to be doing a cab light for this. So 
let me just get a few things prepared and then I'll show you how this upgrade is going to go. So what have we ended up with so far? Well, the LEDs have been soldered on to this piece of strip board here. You can see how I've done it. The reds are at a slight angle, which is fine because we want the white ones to be more intense in terms of brightness because they are the headlamps after all. So you can see how they've been soldered on the strip board. Yes, it's not the best soldering job, but it'll get things done. That's actually because the strip board is a little faulty, so I had to solder the legs of the LEDs to each other themselves can happen with strip boards sometimes, especially if it's not great quality. Unfortunately, you will never know until you start using it. So there's a little tip for you right there if your LEDs don't immediately work the first time you connect them. So what we have done here is the white ones are connected one way and the red ones are connected the other way. That way we get our directional lighting. And let me show you. I've attached the wires to them to connect to the locomotive. The wires are really long because, well, it's always better to have long wires and shorten them later. So let's first try one direction. Okay, it's okay. My batteries have a bit of an issue too. So, uh, yep, that's popping out of it. As you can see, my battery pack itself is a bit uh, old to say the least. There we go, the whites. Now let's have change the polarity and we have well one red is working the reason for that is because I actually I blew out the other red by soldering too much so a little tip for you if you apply too much heat to an LED you can blow it out you can see the light is just about lighting there so you can see my batteries are faulty that's why we're having issues here but yeah one red is fine it will still give a good light inside the locomotive and yes, I'm going to install it inside the locomotive because I've discovered a small issue with the pickups on the dummy. I've ordered fresh pickups, but they'll take some time to arrive from the UK. So in the meantime, this is going inside the locomotive. So let's see how we're going to do it in the next step. So here's the locomotive. I have removed the old incandescent bulb from it. You can see the horn bearing field motor there. We're not going to be doing anything to that today because that's not the focus of this video. A little tip I'm going to show you is now this is the very poorly detailed cab and what we want to do there is we want to get this black masking tape we want to cut a small strip of it like that and we want to put it over there it doesn't matter if you don't get it perfectly because the reason is your LEDs are pointing upwards which means and since this is a piece of translucent plastic light is going to bleed into that area and it's going to look a bit ugly because i mean you don't have the control panel of a locomotive lit up brightly from below individual items might be lit but not the whole thing so we put some black tape there and then after that, what we can do is we place our newly constructed lighting module there put this control panel back there and the control panel has some very useful little notches there where the original incandescent bulbs wires went. So you can put your new wires through those notches and see how it holds the new lighting module in place. And since the lights are pointing upwards, you can now understand why I put that piece of tape. So let's get everything wired up and let's have a test run. Oh dear, there's one thing I forgot to tell you all about. That is the very important aspect of putting a one kilo ohm resistor in series with your LEDs. I mentioned this before in the video, but I didn't actually show that step. Now I'm showing it. So you can see I've connected the resistor to one of the two wires. It doesn't matter which one you connect it to. I'm going to solder it in place. And let me show you what a one kilo ohm resistor looks like. It is this reading the color bands from the outward in. You should have brown, black, red that is a 1 kilo ohm or 1000 ohm resistor. If you want your LEDs to be less bright, you could put two of these in series to get 2 kilo ohms or you could use a higher kilo ohm value. Some people put and make a combination of 1.5 kilo ohms. You can buy 1.5 kilo ohm resistors, otherwise you can use a combination. Just Google online how to do parallel resistor calculations and you'll find out how to do that. That will get you a slightly less bright, but for me I want my lights nice and bright. So I'm going with just one kilo ohm here. So now that the resistor is out of the way, let's get everything wired up. Well, the moment of truth is upon us. Let's see for the first time 
have I wired it correctly have I wired it incorrectly forwards okay so we've got white lights when going forwards that's correct reverse we've got the red light when going reverse that's fine now if your lights don't work properly that is if the red light or the reversing light comes when going forwards just swap the wires around that's perfectly fine so basically you would need to swap those two around it doesn't matter where the resistor is here i've struck it quite lucky and got it right first time but there is no real way to know you could use a multimeter i suppose and determine the positive and negative and then why things are that but if you haven't got a multimeter on hand right now mine is upstairs while i'm in my layout room you could just you know do it like this experimentation i've got it right if i haven't it's just a matter of undoing these taped up connections which haven't been soldered yet and doing it the other way so now that we've got this thing given the correct light it's time to put the body back but let me show you one more thing can you see how the light bleeds a bit there that's because i haven't put enough tape so i shall have to rectify that before i put the body back so here we are and i figured to show you everything working properly let's have the local face on i'm going to lift the powered bogey off the wheel so that it doesn't go anywhere let's select forward direction and you can see the white lights there at full speed let's turn it down a bit you can see the brightness doesn't change that much been going very slow from around 30% uh, on the controller you get some light by 50% it's pretty good when you go to around 80% it's really nice motor is squeaking a bit because it needs some lubrication that's the next thing to be done before I get this on my tracks properly let's select reverse there we are we have a red light coming very nice very nice indeed so to sum up that is how you would give your Hornby Intercity 125 directional lighting. Now there is an issue which I'm going to show you as this one sets off. That is I haven't put enough uh, tape on the loco. So you can see the light is bleeding a bit. But that's okay. Let's have a look as it comes around here from the tunnel and you'll see what I mean. So you can see the light bleeding slightly into the cab a bit. I'm going to have to open it up again a little later and sort that out. But for now, there you go. That is how you do directional lighting for your Hornby Intercity 125. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please drop me a like and subscribe to my channel. And I'll be having many more model rail as well as other things as well. Videos coming up in the near future. Stay tuned and have a nice day.